What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I am James Haskell, along with my co-host, Glenn Martin. This is our first official Ravens offseason 2022 video. Of course, with the Ravens being eliminated from the playoffs, we're excited to talk about all the moving parts that inevitably will happen to the Baltimore Ravens from the personnel standpoint to the player standpoint. We got 22 unrestricted free agents alone, so mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of movement. But today, Glenn, we're focused on one man and one man alone, Gimli of the Baltimore Ravens. That is our offensive coordinator, a Greg Roman. Um, and, and really we have one question, Glenn, you posed the question and I want to, I want to, I want to dive in a little more, um, in, in our instant reaction, you said, have the Ravens outgrown Greg Roman. So we're going to dig into that. Talk about this season, talk about him as a whole and figure mm -hmm. out whether or not that's the case. But before we do make sure you take a second, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It works great for the algorithm. So that way our stuff stays on the top of your feed. And then also turn your notifications because as the offseason is going, I mean, we're really going to start ramping this thing up. So make sure you stay up to date with all your Ravens news. But Glenn, mm -hmm. where do you want to start when dissecting? Well, I'm going to give Roman? a, yeah, I'm going to give a bit of an overview of what the Ravens offense looked during the 2021 season. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. So first and foremost, uh, the Ravens ranked 17th in points per game with 22.8 overall. They ranked sixth in yards per game, averaging 378.8 per game. And points per play, they were 20th, averaging 0.327 points per uh, per play. And then yards per play, 18th at 5.4. And then a very important one, third down conversion rate, 36% this past season, which was 25th in the NFL, uh, fourth down conversion rate, 66% first <laughs> in the whole league. Kind of surprising there with the criticisms that John's heard throughout the season. Uh, red zone scoring percent percentage, 60% on the season, 13th in the league, and then touchdowns per game, 19th, averaging just shy of two and a half touchdowns per game. So that's a bit of an overview here. <clears throat> um, and, you know, it's kind of it's it's a it's a hot topic when you talk Greg Roman and you're talking to Ravens fans because some, some people really hate him and some people really love him and and then and then I think there is a bit of a crowd in between as well. Um, but you know, breaking it down a little bit more, um, you know, granular here, we had the Ravens go. They were number they were fifth in the league in yards per rush and third in, in rushing yards per game. Um, so. No, no surprise there, right? I mean, it's a yeah. good rushing attack and a wink. Uh, I mean, a wink in a, in a Roman led offense, right? So, but that, I also want to. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say that should come as no surprise that they were another a, a good rushing year again for the Ravens. Yeah, absolutely. But one one thing that is a surprise to me is we ranked ninth in passes per game in a Greg yeah. Roman off. They, I think that's to be in the top ten in passes per game. Um, yeah. Pretty surprising, certainly when people talk about how much Greg Roman is is a run first guy, and this team has been a run first guy. So it's interesting to me when we think about and and this gets into dissecting Greg Roman uh, as a whole because I wonder if things have gone worse for him m more based on the idea that he's losing. Maybe he lost a little bit of his identity as a play caller this year and was calling too many pass plays more than he's comfortable with. Um, being that I'd like to know what, you know, our past couple of years, but I would doubt that we were in the top 10 in passes outside of this year. I'd bet a lot of money on that. Yeah. Um, so one, one thing certainly <clears throat> to consider, uh, but look at the end of the day, Glenn, you kind of mentioned in the outset, uh, offensively to have, you know, we talked about yards per game sixth. I mean, you know, for, you, know, you talked about fourth down conversion, he's got some legs to stand on, right. Mm -hmm. As far mm -hmm. as like, Hey, I've done a good job here. I, I lost my entire running back room, my quarterback, uh, you know, my, my, the list goes on and on. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so have we outgrown Greg Roman? I, mm. I want to know, I want to know your answer. Glenn. What do you, what do you think? Well, here's the tough part. I mean, we, when we came into this season last year, the criticism was 
there was too big of a gap between the rushing efficiency and the passing efficiency. We were first in the league in running and 32nd in the league in Like passing. our defense this year. Yeah, so they wanted – Ravens fans wanted that gap to be closed a little bit. We don't have to necessarily be number one if that means that we're not dead last in passing. Um, so – in the outset, when I look at it and I see that we were now third in the league in rushing and we're 13th in the league in passing, I go, you know, just if you look at it, that broad view, that looks right. like exactly what Ravens fans wanted. They didn't want one in rushing, 32 in passing. Well, this year they got third in rushing and 13th in passing. So it yeah, seems just, like he kind of hmm. he did kind of minimize that gap, right? Yeah, and it's interesting because when you say that alone, if, if the Ravens ended this year third in rushing and 13th in, in passing, you better Wouldn't believe Ravens that. fans have taken that? Absolutely, right? They would have and probably so, signed up for that in a heartbeat. And and yeah. then and then another thing you got to consider is, you know, when any, any team loses their quarterback, especially when you have a prolific quarterback like Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. you're going to see a drop-off in, in your team's play. And you're going to see – your win-loss columns start to go in the opposite direction than where you want it to go. So when when Lamar Jackson was healthy and he was playing, I mean, and in the games he played, what was he were were the Ravens what seven and three in the games that he he started and finished? And so it it's like, well, so they were winning. And 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 until he went out for that long stretch with the with the bone bruise, the Ravens were the number one team in the AFC or in yeah, in the AFC, the number one seed. Mm-hmm. So I'm just so torn because I, when I just look at the numbers, just look at the data, it tells me that, man, a guy who lost his quarterback, lost the all-pro left tackle, lost both his 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 run or his top three running backs, and I go, man, he he weathered an awful lot to still end up third and thirteenth when it comes mm -hmm. to pass and run efficiency. So. Jimmy, but help it, help me understand yeah. why everyone's so frustrated with well, him. And because, this is the thing is is. <sighs> This is the thing for me is that I, I look, I, I mean, I agree with you a hundred percent and, and think that it, there's a lot of compelling points there, but when you think about like Mark Jackson to Steve Kerr, right. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Is that, it, it wasn't that Mark Jackson was bad, but it, I mean, he's a great coach. I think he deserves a head coaching job today. I think what he did with that organization set the foundation for what they are today. You know, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that Steph Curry would agree with that. However, I think Steve came in. Now it was a bit pre-packaged. Like that team was kind of marks, right? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he 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 implemented. He pulled a string. He was the puppet master, right? He pulled a string here, pulled a string there, made these tweaks, and then bam! I mean, they turned into the winningest team in in NBA history, right? And they've gone on this run since then. So that to me is the perfect example of what you're talking about. Have we outgrown Greg Roman? And when I see head scratching plays, when I see just like you know we were hollering out about the game going empty. On, I think it was what a uh, after you were uh, running the ball down their throat, you yeah, go empty inside the red zone, right? And and then you see things like wide receivers and tight ends running into each other, uh, you know, based on the route concept and and things of that nature. Um, it really makes you know what drives me, wonder, me crazy too, Jimbo. Is the late how how late we seem right. to get to the line of scrimmage and we're always backed up against the play clock. Exactly. Yeah. So there's these little things that make you wonder: mm -hmm. is there someone out there that can just take the next step? Right. Yeah. Uh, but the hard thing is, is that it's like, you know, the saying is, is the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Right. That's like, the worry. Because, look, fans have forgotten how bad the Ravens offense was for a very long time. I mean, this was a defense organization, a defensive led mm -hmm. organization. We won by, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust and a great defense mm -hmm. is really kind of how the Ravens, you know, were known. So I think people forget that Greg Roman by far has been the most successful offensive coordinator the Ravens have ever had. It's not even close. And I know, and I look, I loved Gary Kubiak. I, I was a big Kubiak guy. He wasn't even close to having the number one offense in all of football. That 2019 season with Greg Roman, the Ravens were so far and away above better than every other team. It wasn't even close. It was now let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Glenn. Some people will say, and I've, I've seen it in Twitterverse. Well, well, Lamar was, I think, six and one or something like that with Marty Morningway. Oh, in his first and, season taking yeah, over. Yeah, and he ran yeah. the crap out of the rock. Now, to me, yeah. I would say, well, those were Greg's concepts. Like, they weren't Marty's. Right. Like, that, that was Greg's offense, even though it wasn't 
formally Green's He may offense. not have been making every play call, and he wasn't. He Marty was still calling the plays, but you're right. It was it was very much the run scheme that, that Greg Roman brought with him. And look, definitely there was growth between Marty, because Marty didn't know how to utilize Lamar Jackson other than make him an actual running back for the most part, right? Like, Let's Greg like knew how to bridge year. that gap. Yeah, I mean, you could he, see the, he led the, the league difference. in touchdown passes. Yeah, I mean, exactly. we had the number one rushing attack by far and the quarterback who led the league in touchdown passes on the same team the same year. But I think the question is, and what you what we're talking about here is, is, is there something better? Yeah. Is it worth giving up what we have to explore the potential of of there, there being something better out there? So that's what the question comes down for me. Yeah. And look, it's tearing me up, Glenn. Tearing me up because all those frustrations you mentioned, oh, they get under my skin. And maybe I'm a risk averse person. Maybe I like to to water the grass around me and let it turn green. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I'm not ready to give up what we got. I'm not like I'm just not ready to do that, man. It sounds like I'm 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 you know in in the midst of a, a, a serious relationship here. But honestly, I'm not I'm not ready to not give ready to up. break up yet. Right. I'm not ready to do it, Glenn. I'm just not. The injuries, yeah. you know, th- this year was so insane with with COVID and injuries and all these things. The fact that he weathered the storm with a backup quarterback and you know a patchwork line and all these things, I, I can't I can't do it. Look, it's a tale of two seasons. The last six seasons, they were the worst team in the league, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, wins and losses wise. But the first 10 or 11, whatever it was that Lamar was in, like you said, seven and three first in the AFC in the AFC. I think that says a lot with still with dealing with the other injuries. So I'm I'm not ready to say we've outgrown Greg Roman yet. Man, it's just it's tough because I'm wondering if this is a Mark Jackson situation. And I was trying to think of a and I know there's a bunch and and hopefully the commenters will point them out. I know there's a bunch of similar situations. If you look back on the history of the NFL as well, where, yeah, coach was successful, but they that coach just couldn't get him over the hump. A new guy comes in, uses the same. Look what Jim Caldwell did. Yeah, exactly. That's another one. Yeah, it's a good point. So at, at this point. I'm starting to think the Ravens may have outgrown them. I think I think they may have. I think that, mm. and I'm and, not and, mad at it. Like I'm not staunch, like set in my opinion. So yeah, I and that, and it doesn't mean that they can't still, you know, run a similar type of system, and that we can still be a run first team, a team that uses its run to set up the pass, and can still take advantage of some of Lamar's unique skill set. Um, but I just don't know if Greg can take them where they need to get uh, as far as getting over that hump in the playoffs and and ultimately winning it all. And, now, and this, it could be unfair for Greg, right? I mean, yeah, he had a, a rough hand dealt to him, and and it may be it may not really be fair to do this. But um, I don't know what what would have to be the straw. Like, what would be the straw that would break the camel's back for you? Would it just be? You need to see him with healthy players because look, there's always going to be injuries. Maybe not to this degree, right. and we certainly hope it never gets to this degree again, but there's always going to be injuries and it doesn't look like the COVID thing's going away anytime soon. So what was it like, cause they lost their last, what, six, mm-hmm. seven. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, I think for me, the straw that breaks the camel's back is if we see repeated mistakes, number one, because Greg has made some repeated mistakes, but he, we've also seen some growth. I think that's fair mm-hmm. uh, along with Lamar Jackson, them growing together. But number two, and this is really it for me. Um, if if Greg is unable to have success with the new coaching staff that we've brought in for an entire season, like it's not fair to say, hey, Greg, we've brought in some guys to support you. You lost your quarterback. You lost all these guys. Now go be successful. Right. But like if he gets a season, I, everyone else can get injured. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want that to happen. But like just a season with Lamar Jackson and this mm-hmm. coaching staff. That That's that's yeah. all I'm asking for. A season with those guys. And their new concepts they're bringing in, combined with Greg and Lamar Jackson, those three pieces. Like I just yeah, and I can see. I can also understand when when you talk about uh, the new additions and how in season one we went from thirty second to thirteenth in passing. Right. And and so it's like, what would happen in in season two with those same guys? Could they now be seventh, fifth in passing and still have a top five rushing attack? And tur- you know, less less turnovers would be would be preferable because that was really the big thing shooting the Ravens in the foot offensively was the turnovers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a really tough call because I I I still think if we go into next season, we're gonna still see the play the play getting getting in late. We're gonna still see 
the mm. play clock at one and zero when the snap is being made, which drives me and a bunch of people crazy, including the players. Uh, it seems like they they show their frustrations as well. Uh, and it was kind of funny because I saw a tweet back when uh, it was Bamani Jones tweeted out from ESPN about Greg Roman, I think back when he was with Buffalo, um, talking about whoever wants to hire Greg Roman next, be ready to see some some delay of games. Um, because at play clock, it's just always see, and it's the same criticism. So they're not going away. We're going to see some of the same, the, the head scratching play calls, the going empty when you've been pounding the ball down their throat, give no illusion of the run. You're going to see that again next year, Jimbo, even though, even if we do see in, improvements e- elsewhere. And then, and then are we back to square one with the same complaints yeah. just a year yeah. later with that window even closing even further? Like and I can predicting. totally see that. I can absolutely see that being the now. But let me ask you this then: if not Greg, then who? Right? Like I don't want to get too far down the road. I mean, look, I, there's I, so many pieces. You know yeah. what I mean? But it, but I, I know that it's never easy. Who would have ever picked John? You know, like if You're I would have right. said that after that, you, you who? Gotta find and I would have said gem. John Harbaugh. You'd be like, who the hell is John Harbaugh? And You're then right. now look how good he's do- done. So right. Just because I don't have a name doesn't mean there's not a guy out there. You're that, right. It is perfect. But I do wonder that that does come to my mind. Like, who is it then? You know what I mean? And th- that's maybe part of my reservation. Is but that don't, I don't you know trust I'm... our front office and our owner to pick the right guy? Yeah. I mean, look, I think John is the best recruiting coach in the NFL. Look yeah. at his staff. I think John has the best staff in the NFL. I mean, if you go down the ranks, I it's, mean, it's you impressive. said it yesterday, the, the best – individual wide receiver coach the Ravens just John said I'm just gonna get strategic and pay for him and be on my staff yep. like forget him working with other guys he's gonna work with just with my guys mm-hmm. so maybe he's there and you know what maybe as the the offseason progresses I'll come around um I know there's a lot of people on the the uh, man I hate that I was getting mixed up on the T Martin train right and I might be there but I haven't heard or seen how much T is contributing to the offense yeah we so don't just, really know you know what I mean and he's yeah, never done it in the NFL yet. If he's even ready. And but do right. you find it interesting that we haven't had we've seen a lot of movement already? I mean, the day after the season was over for a lot of these teams, we see firings going left and right. And we also hear about potential interviews being lined up. We've heard nothing about the Ravens coordinators. Yeah. Um, even though Greg in the past has gotten interviews, had ultimately didn't get the job, but has gotten interviews. Do you are do you think the fact that he hasn't been let go yet? Because look. The Ravens do a good job. If they think like they're going to cut a guy who's a player, yeah, they typically do it early. Person. Exactly, they give them as much opportunity before jobs get gobbled up to to get their own their own work. So the fact that he isn't gone yet, when there could be job openings out there, does that make you think it's less likely that he will be let go? Every day is less and less likely that Greg Roman will be gone. Um, yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. If I had to put money on it, not what I want to happen. Um, you know, but what I think will happen, I think Greg's here next year. And I think that T Martin starts to find ways and we see and hear more about T Martin contributing in the offense. Now, would if you're Greg Roman, do you, do you see the writing on the wall with the more, uh, more, he gets more involved in the offense? It's, are you just prepping me to lose my job and give my yeah, job? But the to only this thing guy? you do, if you're Greg is you say, all I can do is have success. And then next year parlay this into a head coaching job. Right, true, because true. of all the success we've had, we go out win the Super Bowl. The Ravens are number one offense in the league. There's no way people aren't calling for Greg. So rather than looking at him breathing on your neck, you look at him as an opportunity. I'm gonna take advantage yeah. of what he's gonna help me with yep. to turn into to better my career. I think that's the only way you you mentally yeah. survive. Yeah, that's really the only way. Because if not, you're every every play call you're gonna go. Is this my job uh, yep. on the line here? Now, what's the deadline, Jimbo? By this date, do you think you'll know that Greg will be here? Like, is it? By the week's end, is it, you know, is it by the end of the, after the Super Bowl? Like, what, I, I won't you... give you a date. This is what I'll give you. And whatever in this offseason, by John Harbaugh's second press conference. So whenever John meets the media the second time, because this one, whenever he talks to the media again, he's going to say, oh, that's being evaluated. Mm-hmm. And by the second one, all decisions will be made. So I wish I could give you a date on that. Is that after the playoffs? Because there's already job interviews going around. Yeah, That's the thing. It's, like, yeah, that, you know, and 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 the no, professional I say it's courtesy before the thing. playoffs are all uh, before the playoffs are over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's going to be quick. I mean, it's yeah. going to be relatively soon because job. I mean, Brian Flores is already being interviewed. 
uh, for the Bears. We, we we're, we're seeing interviews going around Which for is uh, dumb. How's he going to develop anyway? Whatever. Whoa. How's he going to develop that quarterback? If look at Tua, what do you do with Tua? Now he's turning around. Now he's going to ruin another young kid's career. Well, look, a lot of people were came to the defense of of him. Saying, I, I don't agree with it, but I'm just saying if I'm the well, they're two I'm, different guys. Yeah, definitely. But some of that's know. on Tua. He's just got to build a good staff, I guess is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, I mean, look, he can't be worse than what Nagy did. Yeah, that's true. Nagy Shoot, if, if Roman's if Roman's gone and I'm Brian Flores, I'm calling Greg Roman up real quick. I could see that. That's just me. Yeah, I could I see mean, that S- similar skill set. Yeah, um, can certainly move, but but yeah, I mean, I I, I think there's a it's an interesting conversation, and and so really, we want to hear what you guys think. I mean, yep. have the Ravens outgrown? Uh, Greg mm-hmm. Roman and what he can bring to this team, despite the fact that it seems like on the outset, if you just look at the rankings, he did bridge that gap between the run and, and passing game. And, and we certainly saw improvements. Remember, when before Lamar went down, wasn't Lamar Jackson like leading the league in yards per completion? I mean, this was a guy who's definitely pushing, pushing the ball down field. Yeah. yeah, down the field. And 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 he was putting up ridiculous stat lines of 500 plus yard outings between run and pass. So let us know if, if like is it yeah that's great but it's time to it's time to take the next step and we and you just don't think Greg can take him there um or are you coming to his defense and saying look this guy did it with a cast and crew that it shouldn't even have been competitive and yet every game came right down to the end and we lost five of our last six by a total of like eight points or something crazy like that um let us know what you guys think in the in the comments below and we'll talk soon <laughs>